Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to make a weather station with the ESP8266. As for the materials, you will need an ESP8266 mounted onto a breadboard, along with a DHT11 humidity sensor. And I usually like the breakout board because it usually already puts in the 10K resistor that you need. You will also need three wires. All right. I will put the DHT on the breadboard, and then you can notice right here, there is an S on the corner, and that stands for signal. This will go to the digital pin. On the ESP, it is D2. Then the next pin is for power. I will use a green wire for this, and it goes to 3.3 volts. Finally, we will wire up the ground. Alright, that is pretty much the wiring. I'll see you in the next part where we code it. Let's get started with the code part of this project. To get started, we want to open up Arduino. Once Arduino has loaded, we'll just wait for it for a second. For some reason, Arduino takes a little bit of time to load in this new version, but it sh shouldn't be a big problem. There we go. Now it's started. And we essentially want to create a new file. There we go. The first line is to import. And we have to put a hashtag for the include. And we're going to include the ESP8266 Wi Fi library. Include ESP8266 Wi Fi. H. Next line, we're going to include the Wi Fi client, which we will also need. Dot H. And then include the web server. Dot H. Include the DNS dot H and then finally we're going to include the DHT dot H and I'm just going to save it to the desktop for simplicity and I'm going to call it weather station. Then we want to define our DHT or our temperature sensor and we want to define the pins. The first one is for the DHT pin and that's it. That's the that's pin 5. Then define the DHT type and it's going to be the DHT 11 model 11. Then we're going to set the MDNS responder. And it's equal to MDNS. Then we are going to define the Wi-Fi credentials. So the first one is for the SSID. And that is the SSID, and that's say equal to whatever network you have, so I'm going to put in your Wi-Fi network name and then const char and then that's the password and it's equal to your password.
then you want to go ahead and set the ESP8266 web server and set the port. It's usually a very typical port and it's port 80 for us. Then you want to set a string for the web page information and that's equal to a blank string for now which we will set later. Alright, in the setup we want to put a void in the parentheses. After that we're going to tell a DHT to begin. Then we're going to delay a second. And then we're going to set the serial. Now we're going to begin the Wi-Fi. And the parameters are the SSID and then the password. And then just print in the serial print a line just to make sure that we can read other things. We are going to wait for the Wi-Fi to connect by doing this. We're going to set a while statement and it's while Wi-Fi dot status is not equal to the connected one. So it's WL equal underscore connected. Inside the while loop, just delay for half a second and then print dots. Just print one dot for each one. After that is done, then print another line. So we can separate our lines. After that, we are going to print that we are connected. So connected to, and then after that, just print this, print the SSID. And then print the IP address which is the most crucial part when you don't know the IP address of your ESP8266. Of course, this is a print LN, so it can be, the IP can be on another line. And then just serial.println, and we are going to print the Wi-Fi.local IP. that is done we're going to check if the MDNS is has begun so if MDNS dot begin ESP8266 and the second parameter is Wi-Fi dot local IP then we are going to print that the MDNS responder has started. All right, then we are going to define all the commands, such as the read command to read the humidity. All right, the first one, so the first one is for server dot on and it's going to be for, for a slash read. And then we are going to put in the next part. All right. Great. Finally, you want to put in, in the read go ahead and type in the floats that we need for the temperature. So the first one is called T and it's for the temperature. So it's dht.read 
temperature. And this will read it in Celsius as default. And since float t is not a string, then we have to convert it to a string by doing character result. And then, it's, and then you can put it as an array of, of characters. And I usually like to put 14 to designate the type of character array. And then do this command called dt O S T R R F. Sorry, right there. D S T or D T O. Sorry. S T R F. And then the input is T zero one, and then result. After that, after the conversion, we are going to put in the web page. And web page equals temperature. And then we what we're going to add some other things to the temperature. So web page plus equals, and I forgot to put the semicolon, and we're going to put in result. Finally, add the closing, and that's plus equal, and it's space degrees Celsius. After that, we are going to send the web page to the server. So server dot send, and it's two hundred, and the type is text slash HTML, and then send the web page. And then delay one. By one, I mean one millisecond. All right, after this, you wanna begin the server, and then print that the server has started. Finally, in the loop, again, we're going to put another void in the loop. You just want the server to handle the client. And that's it for the code. Woo, that took like 10 minutes. All right, the next part is coding the app, which should take around five minutes because all you have to do is code a web page and then code it to display the web page that we have to display, such as the uh, IP address and then slash read. That should be pretty easy. I'll, anyway, I'll see you in the next part. All right, now that we have finished the Arduino code, it is time to upload and find the IP address. Select the board, which is Node MCU, and then select the port, which is, uh, for me, it's still lab USB to UART. Then press upload. It will take a little bit of time, maybe around 20 seconds. All right, it is almost done. Now it's at 96 and it is done. Now check the serial monitor. You can see if the dots don't come up, press the reset button on your USP. You can see that the dots are coming up, I'm connected, and it shows me the IP address right here. Great, that's all we need. We will need this to create the iOS app. Anyway, see you then. All right, now let's program the iOS app. To get started, open up Xcode. In Xcode, create a new project. It's going to be a single view app, and I'm going to call it Weather Station App. Then press Next, 
and save it to a convenient place such as a desktop. All right. Great. All right. The first thing we're gonna do is go to main.storyboard. In main.storyboard, drag in a web view. If it's hard for you to find, just search up web view in the search bar. I'm going to give the view a background so that we can see the web view easily. Then drag in a button. Put the button below. This button will be used to reload the web view so that we can get the temperatures up to date. And put it in a good name such as reload temperature. And just make sure it's centered and add constraints. Once you have done that, Go to viewcontroller.swift. In the viewcontroller.swift, first define the IB outlet for the web view. All right. Then we will create a function called an IB action for the reload web view. And of course, we have to put in the extra things. Right. First, we want to create a URL, and that is equal to a URL inside a string, and it, the URL is from a string, and the string is HTTP colon, and then two forward slashes, the IP address that you found earlier, 192.168.1.118 for me, slash read. Then, you want to define a URL request. And that is equal to a URL request. And of course, you have to put in URL. And the URL, it comes from the URL. And it has to be unwrapped. Finally, have the web view load the request. URL request. And finally, we have to link them together by going to the main.storyboard, linking the reference outlet to the web view. And then linking the reload temperature to touch up inside. All right. Now that we have finished the iOS app, it is time to give it a try. I'll see you then. All right. Now let's give it a try. To do this, first of all, you need a phone or a simulator. Then open the app and let it connect first. I will tap reload temperature and currently it is waiting for the temperature and you currently see that the temperature is actually 21 degrees Celsius. We can keep on reloading and we can see it's either 21 or 22. We can see that it's an obvious working because the room temperature is around 21 degrees. Anyway guys, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe if you like this video. And just keep on following along with my tutorials. Anyway, guys, see you in the next video.